week of reflection for staff here at EWTN as we remember our foundress, Mother Angelica, who died five years ago this weekend. Without her doing the Lord's work, there would be no EWTN. Her faith helped dig the foundation for what is now a global Catholic network. What started as just four hours of broadcasting a day in 1981, reaching just 60,000 people, is now the largest religious network in the world, reaching 230 million viewers in more than 140 countries. Her work expanded beyond broadcast. It was in 1987 that she began the men's religious community. She saw the need for there to be a spiritual support for the network. Thanks be to God, we have 10 priests and three permanent brothers, and we're doing just what Mother had envisioned. The Franciscan missionaries of the Eternal Word help communicate through broadcast media the truth and beauty of the Catholic faith through word and example. They're an incredible resource for EWTN employees seeking spiritual guidance. Mother Angelica leaves a legacy that continues to grow. Her yes to Christ in taking her vows and her yes to Christ in her never wavering faith in establishing this network are a gift to us all. It has provided a path to our Lord Jesus Christ for viewers around the world. Mother Angelica was also instrumental in the launch of mission work on college and university campuses. An organization called FOCUS, or the Fellowship of Catholic University Students, gained national attention when its founders, Curtis Martin and Scott Hahn, appeared on Mother's show. She asked viewers to reach into their couches and use their spare change to take FOCUS off the ground. Founder Curtis Martin told EWTN, it would be true to say that Mother Angelica was a midwife for Focus. Before we ever placed a missionary on a campus, Mother invited Scott Hahn and me to be a guest on her show. He went on to say, we raised several thousand dollars from that show and that became seed money for the start of our work with young people. Focus now has more than 35,000 alumni and has fostered more than 950 vocations. Spreading the faith and reaching more souls was always Mother Angelica's main mission. We take a look now at how some missionaries for Focus are impacting young souls today. Doing the work of the disciples. Wherever the Lord is calling us and in terms of the leadership, um, we're going to be there. Work we're all called to do as Christians. Helping people see their identity as sons and daughters um, of a God that loves them. Something Mother Angelica knew very well. Everybody needs to know they are never alone that God loved them before time began. As she read scripture, she explained her love for God and God's love for all of us. Could reach out, and touch them and say, the Father loves you and he's prepared a kingdom for you. She set an example for us on how to share the faith. Her story is really a powerful witness to like what God can do um, when we cooperate with him and let him work through us. Especially for young women in the church. Her impact and her influence of, if this religious sister could do something beautiful like this um, and reach so many souls and so many people, I can too. Today, five young missionaries at George Washington University are spreading the good news. This faith is meant to be for every single person in the world. They know what is at stake. The reality is there are a lot of souls that are from the, far from the church. The salvation of souls. I think about the C.S. Lewis quote that talks about how every person we meet um, is an immortal soul and they'll either spend it um, with God or without God. Like the first followers of Jesus, they too face rejection. It's, it's tough. It's, uh, it's not easy doing it. They face a lot of challenges. Being a missionary during a pandemic on a college campus is an everyday struggle. The impact of lockdowns from COVID-19 has forced what would normally be one-on-one -on -one discipleship to go virtual. We have online Bible studies where we schedule weekly um, times to um, pray through scripture, discuss whatever struggles that we have. And making sure everyone they mentor during the pandemic feels seen, known, and cared for. When a lot of my guys were virtual that I, was, that I was working directly in contact with was just, I can't be there for you in the same way, but I can pray for you and I can fast for you. Growing secularism is also a challenge. It's kind of crazy to be Catholic on campus nowadays, um, especially at a pretty secular university. This work, they say, is vital to the future of the church. 
We want to help you right now learn how to leave college and go into a parish and start Bible studies there and evangelize people there and then bring other people into that parish as well. So when it comes to reaching the youth, it's really helping them to be formed to set them up for the rest of their life. Just like Mother Angelica knew that Jesus would provide a path for opening hearts, they too know that the Holy Spirit is leading the way. It takes a lot of work. Usually what happens is like God does, does most of it. One of the biggest blessings um, that we have is just Christ being the model. They're grateful to share his love and transform the world through Christ. I hope that everyone can know that they are loved not just by another person, but by the creator that made them and adores them. Secretly is one of the best jobs out there because it's, it's all about helping people find God and that's what everyone wants ultimately. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death, amen. Each of these missionaries come from different parts of the country, different walks of life, but they all realize that we are one universal church we should all be on mission with them.